Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at transaction log shipping, which is a high availability solution for SQL Server 2008. So to begin, we have two servers here, and the primary server that we will be using is called EXCHNU2, and the database that we will be attempting to replicate is the student database that I've created here, and as you can see, I've already populated a couple of records here. So the secondary database is going to be stored on a server called EXCHNU1 on an instance called SQL. And as you can see, there are no, no databases on this server currently, just the typical default databases that you get when you install SQL Server. So to begin our transaction log shipping, it is important to know that there are three steps in transaction log shipping. The first step is that the, there's a full database backup needs to be done on the primary database and it needs to be restored on the secondary database. After that, transaction logs are, are, back up, are backed up to the primary server and then the transaction logs are copied to the secondary server and finally the transaction logs are replayed on the secondary server. So those three steps are very important in understanding how transaction log shipping works and we will see this in action as you continue with the tutorial. So to begin we need to right click the student's database, select properties and we're going to select the property Transac transaction log shipping and then we're going to select enable this as a primary database in the log shipping configuration or source database. I'm going to reduce the backup settings from 15 minutes to maybe about 5 minutes and then we're going to set the location for where the transaction logs will be backed up to. I've already created a folder on the server, on the primary server called backups and I'm just going to enter the URL for the same location as C drive backup. These really point to the same location on the server. Next I'm going to set the schedule for the transaction log backups. I'm going to reduce, the, reduce this from 15 to about, say, 4 minutes. Select OK. And then I'm going to select OK again. And next, for the second step, I'm going to add the secondary database. This will be EXCH new one. And I'm going to set to take a full backup of the primary database and restore this full backup to the secondary database. And I prefer this option because you don't have to manually take backups of the database and have to manually restore it to the secondary database. By selecting this option, this will be done automatically for you. Otherwise, you will have to select an existing backup and restore it. So for ease of use, I'm going to select this option here. Next, I'm going to go to copy files and on the this location, I'm going to set where we want to copy the transaction log files to. Remember, this is the second step in how transaction log, sh log shipping works. The first step is the transaction logs are backed up on the primary database. The second step, the transaction logs are copied to the secondary server. And in the third and final step, the transaction logs are replayed on the secondary database server. I'm going to reduce the schedule on this to about 5 minutes so that the transaction logs are copied to the secondary server every 5 minutes. And finally, we're going to select the restore transaction log, which is, which is the third step. And I'm going to select standby mode and disconnect any users in the database when restoring backups. If there are any databases that are logged on or any processes using that standby database, then restore jobs and subsequent restore transaction log jobs will fail if there are any users connected. So I prefer to select this option here and standby mode leaves the database in read only mode. And again I'm gonna set the schedule here and I'm gonna reduce this reduce this to about five minutes. Like so and press OK. And that should be it. So I'm going to select OK again. And that should be it for our configuration. And if press OK, we will see the wizard being run. And so we see that the primary database has been backed up and restored on the secondary database. So let's take a look at our file, at our database on the secondary server. And you can see that it says standby here. And if I expand it out, we will see that the table 
is also restored and under the table we will see that it has an identical identical to the primary database as you see here so next what we want to do but before I go into demonstrating how the transaction log shipping works uh, I want you to take a look at the backup folder and you will see under the backup folder the where the transaction logs so right now this is the full backup where transaction logs will be stored and copied so on the primary server this is where all the transaction log backups will be stored and on the secondary server this is where the transaction logs log files will be copied to alright so next what we want to do we want to create some records on this database so on the primary database I'm going to in fact I'm going to delete a couple of records on the primary database so I'm going to delete these two and I'm going to add another record to this database and I'm going to say close and then we wait for the SQL agent jobs to run now because the SQL agent is running these jobs it is important that the backup folders that you've created have these users the SQL server agent user has access to these backup folders that you are using for copying and backing up your transaction logs so if you take a look at the SQL agent section you will see that there are some jobs created the copy job, the restore job on the secondary server and then on the primary server the backup job and if you want to take a look at the status of these jobs whether, whether or not they are successful you can right click and select view history select options with both of them click refresh and you will see that the 1045 the backup job the copy job sorry and the restore job was successful so in a couple of minutes in about three minutes we should see the new records on the the new record on the secondary database and you should see the older records having been deleted and then we'll take a look at the backup folder to see if there are any changes in terms of the number of files or any transaction log files have been deposited in those backup folders and so after the five minutes on the source primary server backup folder we see that the SQL transaction log backup file is here and on the secondary server backup file we see that the transaction log has been copied across and if you take a look at our SQL agent logs click on refresh here we see that the copy and restore job have been successful and then finally if we open our database we should see those changes having been replicated so if I open the, the standby database remember a standby, a standby database is read only it's not possible to edit this database directly and so after, after a couple of minutes we see that the transactions have been replicated in both databases on, on the primary database and the secondary database have the, exactly the same information so if you take a look at the standby database if we would like to bring this online then there's a query that we need to run if we go to a new query and that query is the restore database with the recovery option so I'm going to select execute and now we see that the database is if we click on refresh we should see that it has changed to an online database so this is what you can do in the event that a primary database is not available or has malfunctioned